Welcome to another Ask Scanner School session. This is where I answer your questions, whether they come in through email or they come in through a voicemail line. This is where I help you out. And also we help our fellow students by listening to the questions and answers being read on the podcast. So with that, let's go ahead and meet you on the other side of the intro. Welcome to The Scanner School, a podcast dedicated to the scanner radio hobby. Class is about to begin. Here is your host, Phil Lichtenberger. Welcome to Scanner School. My name is Phil Lichtenberger. My amateur radio call sign is W2LIE, and this podcast is always here to teach you everything that you need to know about the scanner radio hobby. And today, we are doing that. We are answering your questions. So if you are just getting into the scanner radio hobby, or you've got a little bit more of a complicated question, let me know. You can ask your question by going to scannerschool.com slash ask, and we've got three different ways for you to submit your question. The old-fashioned way, you can use the contact form. You can leave me a uh, voicemail at 516-308-2885, or you can leave me a voicemail also by using SpeakPipe. SpeakPipe is great for you guys who are outside the United States where that number isn't local to you. Also, if you just want to leave me a message while you're driving or on the fly or anything else, again, scannerschool.com slash ask has all the ways you can do so right then and there. Now, again, there's also that secret fourth method. method. You can just email me directly. Phil at scannerschool.com. I send out weekly newsletters usually, and you can reply to one of those, and we'll put you in the queue. Now, the trick here, though, is if you ask me your question using our voicemail line, basically using your voice, I'll put you in a running for a free consulting call where I call tutoring sessions, where we sit down, just me and you, and we go through whatever it is that you are having problems with when it comes to the Scanner Radio Hobby. I use Zoom or uh, Skype for this basically allows me to share my screen and you to share your screen. And it's like having me sitting right next to you and going through and helping you out with whatever it is. So if it's radio programming, setting up an SDR, just getting things going on your brand new Home Patrol style radio, or even setting up programs like EasyScan, Butel Software, ProScan, or anything like that, this is what I'm here for. I love helping you out with your scanner radio questions, which is, again, why I have this segment here called Ask Scanner School. So again, all the session notes are online, scannerschool.com slash session 115. We've got four great questions that are in this week. And also, before I forget, have you checked out our new Zello channel? Last week, we brought that uh, basically set that up. I want to thank everybody who has come out and has at least last week tried that out. Again, scannerschool.com slash Zello is how you get access to that PTT application. Now, again, Zello spelled Z-E-L-L-O or Zulu Echo Lima Lima Oscar. Basically sounds like hello with a Z in front of it. Is a push to talk app. So think of it of the old Nextel devices for those of us here in the States. Or basically it's a voice over IP PTT app that basically turns your cell phone into a two-way radio. There's no licensing required for it. You're not stuck on GMRS. You're not stuck on ham radio. You don't have to use a hotspot. <clears throat> All you need is your is is your your smartphone, your iPad, or even your Windows computer to get into the chat. So again, scannerschool.com slash Zello is going to have all your information. And once you again, join us again tonight. It's Tuesday night. Let's join us again tonight for our net. Again, that Zello page will have all the updated information on it. If the time has to change, again, I'd rather have it there instead of giving you wrong information here because if you listen to this podcast six months from now and things have changed, I don't want to have that old information here on the podcast. So again, scannerschool.com slash Zello. And if I'm not there, just start without me. And again, hang out in the room afterwards too, because maybe someone will show up midweek and they want to talk about something that's you know going on. Maybe, who knows? It could evolve. So again, scannerschool.com slash Zello. And I've basically talked enough. So let's get right into our very first question. Mike Folk writes in, Hi, Phil. I have a unit in BC. 396T, that when I turn it on, it shows copyright 2005. I just started trying to use it after a year of it being idle. I live in Sacramento, California, and had this unit already programmed, and I recently wrote updates for my area from Radio Reference. 
For some reason, I only pick up two channels, Elk Grove PD and Galt PD. A few months ago, I was able to get Roseville PD. He lives in Roseville now. But now I can't get that either anymore. I'm trying to figure out if the scanner is too old to pick up the recent changes to systems, or am I doing something wrong? Or is it my location that is a dead zone? I don't think the last is an issue because I have been taking the scanner with me in my car and the results are the same. Any help for me? All right, so I took a look. First of all, Sacramento, California is in Sacramento County. Very easy, very simple to try and figure this one out. So let's go ahead and jump over to the radio reference database and take a look and see what we have over in Sacramento, Sacramento, California. Why am I saying Sacramento? I have no idea. So the first thing we notice as we start to scan through is we have quite a mix of conventional and two trunk radio systems here. That's the trick I'm looking at here. So I'm scrolling down to Elk Grove, and I don't see any conventional systems for Elk Grove. All I see are two trunk systems. I see a Sacramento Regional Radio Communication System, a.k.a. the SRRCS, and also the Sacramento Regional Radio Communication Systems, P25, now called the SRRCS. Again, same name for two different systems. I wonder if this is what is confusing you a little bit. But in the notes, it says that fire and police for Elk Grove are on the smart zone type 2 system. But there's transitions being made to get them over to the P25 phase 1 system. Let's scroll down now to Galt. That has only two conventional frequencies here. It's got a public works and a services. Again, they're going to end up on the Motorola type 2 and the phase 2 system. The other trick here, though, is I'm not seeing any information here for Roseville PD. None whatsoever. So I'm not exactly sure where they're being dispatched from or by. Maybe it's on a county level or whatever, but I'm just, I'm not seeing any, any information on Roseville PD in radio reference at all. So let's go over to the very first trunk system here, which is the SRRCS, <clears throat> the Motorola Type 2 system. I love it how it's got the same name, but they didn't differentiate between it. So, the older system, the Motorola Type 2 system here. We've got a city system, which is a basically a transmitter site, and then a county-wide system. Okay, 800 megahertz, pretty standard Motorola Type 2 system. We look for elk, right? Do a quick, quick little search here for elk, and I've got elk grove talk groups. And I see we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24 Elk Grove talk groups that go from police to code enforcement, traffic, public works, building inspectors, park and recreations, buses, and city TAC. Also in this section here for water services and school systems. All right. Galt has police, parks and recreation, and government. All right, all on the Motorola Type 2 system. Again, not finding anything for Roseville when it comes to police or fire on this system, which has me scratch my head. Where are they? If you say that you have a village PD that does that. Now, we go over to the new P25 trunk system. Okay, we've got three sites here. We've got a downtown Folsom. We've got a Twitchell Island. And then we've got the dreaded countywide simulcast. Okay, we're talking here about a Project P25 Phase 1 system. What's also on here? Well, we have Elk Grove with the same talk groups. Again, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. 24 talk groups right here just for Elk Grove. Again, the same thing with the Unified School District. And we've also got something for Galt. So... It looks like either they're on the P25 system or they're on both of them at the same time or something's going on. Maybe one's part-time, maybe one's not, all right? So let's just assume here they're on the P25 system. My first question to you is going to be, 
do you have the P25 system programmed in? Okay. If you do, you're looking at the BCD396T, not the XT. The trick with the T is that each site can only be programmed, or each, each system can only have one site. That's a better way of saying this. So if you wanted to program in the simulcast site, the Twitchell Island site, and the downtown Folsom site, you basically need to put this into three different systems. Not like with the XT or the P2s where you can take all the sites and put them into a single system, all right? So make sure not only are you looking at the P25 system and the Motorola Type 2 system, but that you have the correct site listed in both the Motorola Type 2 and the P25 Phase 2, all right? My best guess for you would be to find out the closest transmitter site to where you're looking at, whether it's downtown, countywide, or Twitchell. The other thing to remember, though, when it comes to P25 and multi-site systems is not every talk group is going to be on every single site, all right? If a radio has not affiliated with a site, that talk group will not end up on that site unless it is told to be there by the admin who says this is a global talk group. That's at least the way I understand it. All right. So if you're listening to say downtown Folsom, and that's the, the site that you have programmed into your radio, and that talk group is only on the countywide simulcast, you're never going to hear that talk group because it's not on the downtown Folsom in my example here. Okay. Now let's talk about the other issue that could be going on here. Simulcast. The 396T, the XT and the 325P2, they're not really so great when it comes to simulcast, all right? Whether or not that is an issue in your case, I don't know. Are you able to hear anything else? So that's the other question here. Is it just anything on this system? Are you able to hear any amateur radio? Are you able to hear anything else? Aviation. We've got to figure out, do you have your global attenuator turned on on the scanner? Do you, it should be, uh, I believe, a letter G on that radio. Is the antenna port working correctly? Sometimes these SMA connectors, they get a little stressed. You take a couple dives off the desk, they don't work after a while. It could be also, too, we know this says radio is copyright 2005. We're looking at a radio that, believe it or not, a little old. <laughs> it's hard to believe this radio is 2005, and I still think about this as a fairly new radio, but in reality is, right, it's 15 years old as I'm recording this. So it got some age on it too. So whether or not it's time to pack it up and, and look at something new, that's that's entirely up to you. You know, we got to rule out basically, is it a site problem? Is it, you know, simulcast issue? Is it a bad scanner as a attenuator. What I would say to do too is if you can hit the hold button on the scanner and rotate through the, the channels that you've programmed in, the actual frequencies of the transmitter sites, do you get any type of, of data noise on any of those? Are you finding that you're not even able to hear the control channel? Or are you hearing the control channel, but it's not working for you? If you can't even hear the control channel, you're already sunk, right? You're never going to hear anything to begin with because you can't even pick up the control channel. So that's another test I would do. All in all, you got a mixed bag here. It's kind of tough to say really what's going on. I would say take a look at the P25 system. Make sure you can hear that P25 system. If you're simulcast, you might be able to hear it great, but you may not be able to decode it. So sometimes with these simulcast setups, it can be quite difficult with the older gear. Mike, thank you for asking your question. I really do wish you best of luck with this one. And if you do get it squared away, I'd love to hear that you finally got it working and what the solution was for you. Thanks again for asking your question. Thomas Rafferty writes in, Hi, I'm a retired police officer, village police, railroad police, and campus police officers. I still like listening to the scanner, especially listening to police, fire, railroad, coast guard, and services departments during the winter months. The only question I have is how to program or add talk groups or frequencies to the GRECOM PSR 800 handheld scanner. There are some groups that have been added that I don't have in there. I had a friend with a computer program, but he is a distance away. Thank you, Tom. Tom, the GRE PSR 800, what a, what a great little uh, 
introduction to Whistler, getting into the DB world, which eventually became the Whistler TRX-1 uh, once they added the keypad to it. I have the TRX-1 here. I was going through the setup. I'm going to have to assume, because I don't have the GSR, uh, the GRE PSR-800. I only have the TRX-1 to test with, but it should be the same. Whistler hasn't really made too much in the software upgrades to these radios. It was more of adding the keypad to everything. So the easiest and best way to do this really is with easy scan software. You can then basically drag from radio reference and drop it into the scanner. Now, the name implies it's going to be easy. I don't find the software to be very easy. I find the software to be very painful to work with. So if you're looking to just add a handful of talk groups, you might keep your sanity just by doing this from the keypad of the radio. Now, I am not one to enjoy keypad programming. I, I find it to be uh, really a pain in the neck to do. And if given the opportunity to go between a computer or keypad programming, I would always say computer programming, except when I have to use easy scan software. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, not true, but I mean, I've 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 been pretty vocal about it in the past. I just don't find Easy Scan to be easy at all. So, let's just assume here you're not going to use the Easy Scan software because you said that your buddy has it and he's a distance away. Look, I recommend putting Easy Scan software on your computer so you can at least get the database updates. If you do decide to go this route, though, do not do the firmware upgrades because the GRE firmware is different from the Whistler firmware. Okay, you'll brick the radio. All right, you don't want to do that. Obviously, you don't want to do that. So very simply, what you're going to do is you're going to you let this the, the radio boot up. I know it takes a while for it to happen, right? But once you get it set up, what you want to do is you're going to go into menu, right? Okay, so from the main menu, what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and we're going to go into the program menu. From the program menu, we are going to go into edit system. Once we go into there, we're going to find the trunk system that we want to edit the talk group or add the talk group to, all right? So we're going to go left or right until we get to that system. So I don't know, right now I'm in a system right now and I have one. So I'm going to hit the select button, which is okay. As I'm talking to you right now, it's loading in the system. All right. The next step now is to go down to add a talk group. And then you're going to go down to where it says, right underneath where it says save changes, it says TGID wildcard. Okay. You want to go to the right and it's going to say enter ID. And this is where you can put your ID in that you, that you want to add. You back out of here, you can alpha tag it. The key though is you have to add it to a scan list. All right. So make sure you add this talk group to a scan list and then save it. Congratulations, you now have one extra talk group added to your scanner. You have to rinse, wash, and repeat the process every time you want to go into and add another one. So once you've got it saved, you go back again, go add talk group, scroll down and add the talk group ID, alpha tag it, assign it to a scan list, hit save, and you'll be back into the races. All right, so what about conventional? With conventional, it's... A little bit easier. From the main menu, you're still going to scroll down. You're going to go down to programming menu. At the bottom of the screen, you're going to see add conventional frequency. Just like that, you're going to pop in the frequency, right? So in our case here, let's just pick uh, uh, 146. Dot, I don't know, 45, and hit enter or, or select. From there, we're going to add the alpha tag. We're also going to set our scan list. Again, we have to set this to a scan list, right? Squelch mode, you can also set that up to be DCS, CTS, uh, and also if it's going to be the digital mode or not as well. So from there, again, you want to set it to be P25. I'm sorry, you want it to be DMR or NXDN so that it can also automatically go in there as well. So programming the radio, the the, the GRE and Whistler and, the, and these pro lines, right, that use the radio reference database, these aren't so bad to program by hand, to be honest with you, especially if you're bringing in information from the database already, but sounds like you don't have that. Again, make sure, I, I know I said before, assign it to a scan list. Whatever it is that you're adding now will never be accessible to you, all right? 
I hope this helps you out. Again, this problem is this radio and your problem isn't really such a, a big deal. It is one of the more easier scanners to add additional talk groups in or frequencies in on the fly. All right, Tom, thanks for writing in and I hope that answered your question. Okay, we'll be right back after these words. This session of Scanner School is sponsored by East Coast Pagers. Now, East Coast Pagers is one of my online companies, and we are a Unication, Apollo, and Swiss phone dealers serving the North American market. Now, if you're looking for a personal use pager or one for your department, we can get you a quote at the very best prices. So why does a company like East Coast Pagers support Scanner School? I think that every scanner reader user should at least put one pager in their collection of radios. The reason why is very simple. It frees up your scanner to just do scanning, and then you have one radio that's dedicated to your local fire activity. Now, with a pager, you can have voice storage. You can do tone outs. You can keep it silent. You can go back the next day and listen to what you've missed overnight. It's more than you can do with an out-of-the-box scanner. And with today's pagers, having multiple frequencies and even having multiple channels in a scan list, like the Unication G1 can do eight channels in a scan list. It has 64 memory channels, and out of the box, it comes with 11 minutes of stored voice and a desktop charger. The G2s to G5s, they do P25 phase one and phase two in simulcast environments with stored voice, paging on conventional NP25. Oh, and they're upgradable too to DMR type one and type two. They are more rugged than today's consumer based scanners. And with a pager like a Swiss phone S quad, you won't even realize you're wearing one. It'll help keep you informed as to what's going on in your neighborhood. So again, eastcoastpagers.com or contact me directly, phil at eastcoastpagers.com. Do you have a new scanner? You're having problems understanding how it works? Maybe you're new to the entire Home Patrol database of programming and you can't figure out Sentinel. Did you get a new SDR and you're trying to figure out how to install it or you want to learn how to use Unitrunker, DSD+, Plus, maybe set up a Pioware or even just make some changes and you don't understand how this system and the equipment works, the podcast might be great for you, but maybe you need a little bit more of one-on-one help with setting something up. I'm available to do just that with you with our private tutoring sessions. You can book me online by going to scannerschool.com slash consulting for a one-hour session. And it's great because we can actually share computer screens remotely and I can guide you through step-by-step as if I was sitting right next to you. So again, book me for an hour at scannerschool.com slash consulting for your scanner radio one-on-one tutoring session. National Communications Magazine is your personal library of scanner, CB, GMRS, FRS, MURS, and two-way radio articles written by the best minds in the business over the past three decades. Your Natcom personal online access account allows you to download the newest issues of America's Hobby Radio Magazine, as well as back issues too. So visit natcommag.com to download your free sample issues and sign up today. That's natcommag.com for National Communications Magazine. Did you know you can help support Scanner School without it costing you any additional money? There's several ways you could do so. One of them is just by sharing the show. If you post a a podcast session you've enjoyed on your Facebook page, share on Twitter or retweet our stuff, that's a great way to help promote the podcast. Another way to do so is by going to scannerschool.com slash support and clicking on one of the banners in there that helps support the podcast. One of them is Amazon. If you click on our Amazon link and you make a purchase from our link, it doesn't cost you anything, but we earn a commission on that sale. If you're looking for software, we've got a great resource for you, Butel Software. I've been using Butel for years. Love their software. I continue to buy their software today. And you can go directly to the website by going to scannerschool.com slash Butel or by scannerschool.com slash support. Now, again, it doesn't cost you anything extra if you're going to go ahead and buy that software and by using our link. Another method we have is by going to Scanner Master. I love Scanner Master. Been going to, uh, they've been getting my business for years when it comes to scanner radios and accessories. Now, again, if you use our link on our website and you go make a purchase at Scanner Master, we make a commission off that sale. But again, it doesn't cost you anything to help support us using that method. Now, for those of you that want to contribute a little bit more directly, we have a couple ways you could do so. You can donate one time by using our PayPal link, but you can also become a Patreon supporter. By becoming a Patreon supporter, it gives you benefits for supporting our, our podcasts and channels and everything else. At the $1 a month level, it's a great way of saying thank you. 
At the $3 a month level, you will get the podcast early. As soon as the podcast is ready to be published, you'll get it in your own private podcast feed. Now, at the $5 a month level, not only do you get the $3 a month benefits, but you also get a Squelchy sticker pack. Now, Squelchy is our little radio cartoon character that represents Scanner School. Not only do you get the, the, the stickers, but you also get a special monthly Q&A session that follows the general Q&A session I do on YouTube and Facebook just for you guys, just to help you out. So again, you can help support us on Patreon by going to scannerschool.com slash support. And I want to thank the following continuing Patreon supporters. Craig Harper, Dan, Glenn Blum, Glenn Bryden, Guy Lee, Irvin Thibodeau, James Felling, Jeff Block, John Goldenberg, Ken Newberry, Kenneth Fowler, Mark Thompson, Mark Beebe, Raymond Hill, Ronnie Bach, Sal Marandola, Scott Vorder, Signals Everywhere, Stephen Sheffield, Todd Glendie, and William Arcand. Now, again, the $5 a month is our best uh, valued tier. And if the Patreon takes their cut, that's like giving us a dollar a week for the benefit of not only getting the podcast early and also getting your own private Patreon supporter live Q&A video session. So again, scannerschool.com slash support. Okay, so Freddie writes in, he goes, looking for the best scanner available, thinking the SDS 100, who is the best source to purchase from? So I get this question a lot and I don't like to look at it as what is the best radio available. I like to answer this one as what is the best radio for you? Okay. There, there's a lot that's involved with this trying to figure out what the best radio is right now. Everybody has a lot of feelings about what the best radio is. My opinion, you know, I always like to say that opinions can stink sometimes, you know, everybody has one, everybody else has another body part and you know, they, they stink. So, Listen, I'm not going to come out here and say the best radio is the STS 100. I'll get a bunch of people who email me and say, "How ah, can you say that? It's it's you know it has problems with this. It's got problems with that. It's you know, I'll get the Whistler camp on my on my case." <laughs> so, the best solution I could say is, "What's the best radio for you?" Okay, the best radio for you. Do you need a radio? First of all, let's work our way backwards, okay? So the SDS-100 and the SDS-200, they're the only two scanners on the market right now. I'm talking about scanners on the market right now that will do simulcast, okay? So if you're in an area with P25 Phase 1 or Phase 2 and you've got LSM or you've got simulcast, the SDS-100 and the SDS-200 is pretty much the only scanner that's going to do of any service in your area, okay? Can't say it's the best scanner. It's going to be the only scanner that works, okay? That's the way we're going to look at this one. That's why I don't get people jumping on me saying, how dare I say it's the best scanner available? Hey, you know, I've got one. I've got an SDS-200 too. I love them. I I can't say enough about them, how much I like them, okay? Now, again... It may not be a race cup of tea. The Unication pagers work really well in simulcast as well. Now, again, you're going to get a pager, not a scanner, even though they are we're now working on firmware that's going to allow it to function more like a scanner. I am, as a dealer, I am not participating in that beta program. I've been advised basically against it. So for those of you who are beta testing, good luck to you. But for me, it's I just it's not something I, I can I can work on at this time. So I don't have any input as to how well the Unication product will work as a scanner or is currently working as a scanner. But if you are interested in finding out how one works and you're interested in buying a Unication product, reach out to me because I do have some flexibility in the online pricing and I can definitely help you out when it comes to getting one in your hands. Let's put it that way. Okay. Do you need, let's go back to the topic at hand here. Is, is the SDS 100 the best radio here? Well, again, do you need NXDN? Do you need DMR? Are you willing to pay more for them? Do you need Pro Voice? Let's back that one up and leave Pro Voice at the door here for a second. If you're not willing to pay more for them and you want it to be included with the scanner, you have an option of going with the TRX1 or the TRX2 by Whistler. Those radios will do P25 phase one, phase two, and will also do DMR and XDN out of the box. However, 
they are not made to work really well on simulcast. So again, if you need simulcast, your best bet and the best solution for you would be the SDS 100 or the SDS 200, or as I said before, a Unication pager. Again, if you don't need P25 and you don't need simulcast and you want to go backwards from there too, you can also look at the you know the the, the Udidin, uh 536 and 436 HP models. They are dropping in price because of the SDS 100 and 200. They will give you the Home Patrol database. They will work fine for a P25 system as long as you don't need simulcast. And if you do have a simulcast issue, if you can get the scanner isolated onto one transmitter site, then it might work really well for you, or it might not. If you just need conventional, the sky's the limit, really, as to what it is you can get. You can start with the, oh, the cheap old, what is this one over here that I just reviewed? The SR30C, if you just want a bare bone scanner. Or what I would recommend beyond there is the BC125A2. I think that one is a beta radio for the price point. You can go into the 325P2. You can look at the whistle line and and look at any one of their radios as well. So is it the best radio out there? You know what? It's in a category all by itself. It's the only scanner that's got a color display. It's the only scanner that um, gives you all the information that it gives you. It's the only scanner on the market that does simulcast. Okay. Is it your only simulcast solution? Again, no. You can get a Unication pager. You can use the SDS-100. You could use an SDR, a $25, $30 SDR, new elect dongle, or the RTL SDR dongle. Those will work fine using proper software. Now, it's going to take you a little bit of time to configure one and get one set up and working. But for a fraction of the cost of the SDS-100, now, again, you're investing your time on this, and it's not really a simple uh, set up to get involved if you're not familiar at all with how computers work, you know, it, it, it is something that can also be a great solution for you. So again, there's there's a lot of what, what's going to be the best here. So let's look at part two of your question here. Where is the best source to purchase from? Now, listen, the number one place where I do my business with is Scanner Master. They've been in business for well over 30 years. I actually forget the exact number, but if you go to the website, it will be at the top banner to how how they have been in business. And they've been getting my business for years and years and years. Now, they're not the only game in town. you got Bearcat Warehouse. You've got Zip Scanners. You know, you've got... AES Ham, you've got HRO, you've got other dealers out there that will, you know, that carry the scanner. My choice, though, is to go with Scanner Master. I, I, I again, they're they're great at what they do. If you're going to buy it online, I do have an affiliate with Scanner Master. Now, again, I'm an affiliate with them because I am a customer of theirs, and I do buy a lot of radios from them. Scannerschool.com slash scanner master. Now it's one word, will be my affiliate link to get over to Scanner Master. If you use that link again, scannerschool.com slash scanner master, at any time before you make a purchase, we will earn a small affiliate fee for whatever it is you buy from Scanner Master. It doesn't cost you anything extra to help support Scanner School by going to that link. So again, if you are buying from scanner master and you want to help us out that's a great way to do so that's why i recommend them again you can also look at amazon amazon's got some really really good prices and i'll put it we also have an affiliate link with amazon because you can buy and i do buy anything that i need from amazon so again you go to scannerschool.com slash support we'll have a link to amazon in there as well so um case in point is i just bought a pair of you did bct 15 x's or bct 15 x yeah, I always forget that line is it an XT or an X, but that's the that's the oddball. I bought a pair of those from Amazon, and I bought them from Amazon because they had the best price. They they were better than Scanner Master, and I just needed to buy two of them. And I, I'm a big fan of Amazon as well. So again, as much business as I get, or I send, or I deliver, one way or the other to Scanner Master, sometimes money talks and. I price shop just as much as everybody else does. And Amazon will sometimes have them beat and sometimes they won't. And sometimes Scanner Master's got the exclusive and Amazon doesn't have it. So again, when I look at buying the brand new radios, my SDS-100, SDS-200, I purchased them right from Scanner Master. When the 436, the 536 came out, I always look to buy from them. All right. So that's that's that. 
Freddie, I really hope that answered your question. And I hope it helped a lot of other people too as to – I get this a lot. I get that kind of question a lot. What is the best scanner? And I really like to just say – what is the best scanner for you? Because not everybody has a wallet deep enough to buy a $600 scanner. So make do with what we got. And uh, I don't like to go into debt for radios, although mm, I can say it's happened once. <laughs> okay, guys. That's that's uh, the answer, Freddie. And uh, we got one more on, on deck. So let's go ahead and hit that one. This question comes from Aaron. He says, I have an SDS 100. Can you tell me the flight watch move for the statewide system. So we traded a few emails here and found out he's in Evansville, Indiana. So we will quickly just do a Google search, right? This is my process to try and find out where tour groups are and everything else. So we're going to go through this really quick uh, in a live scenario for you. So Evansville, Indiana, do a quick search for that. We find out that it is in Vanderburg, County in Indiana. So I go through there really quick and I find out we have got no listing at all whatsoever for Flight Watch. Also, take a look at the Vanderburg County P25 system, and I don't see anything in there whatsoever that is related to a Flight Watch system. Now, again, I don't know what Flight Watch is until you know the end of this little conversation here. So I start going down the bottom of the page and I see a bunch of other talk groups in here and one of them is uh, catches my eye which is the statewide system it's the Indiana Project Hoosier the safety system so right away we jump into that it's a P25 multi-site multi-zone system and lo and behold when I look for a flight watch I find this flight watch statewide air medical helicopters talk group then on talk group 10,682 or talk group 10682 for the short answer on that one. But again, we want to look at the Project Hoosier system and just see what this actually is. It is a P25 phase one system with, it's a statewide system. So there's talk groups in all sorts of counties in here. If you're going to program this into your scanner, what you want to do Aaron, is you want to look for the sites that are closest to you and see if there's any in your county. So as I am scrolling through here, I am looking for uh, Vanderburg, Indiana, right? I believe is what it was, the county here. So uh, yes, Vanderburg. So I found Evansville actually has a site, which is where you're from. So I would start by just putting in that site and hopefully you're going to be able to hear your flight watch talk group on there. So as you said earlier, though, there could be other um, sites that are in use on this talk group or if the talk group is not on this site, you will not hear that talk group. So again, is this simulcast? I'm not sure. It doesn't say Evansville simulcast. It just says Evansville. So you might be okay here with any radio. But you can, you have the STS 100. So whether or not it was simulcast or not, you would be okay. But again, uh, that's where the um, the flight watch system is. And again, if you're already listening to this because you got Vandenberg uh, State Police is on there, uh, Vandenberg County has talk groups for uh, EMA, fire commons, sheriffs, law enforcement. They're on there as well. So if you're already monitoring those types of talk groups, you know you can hear the system. So it's just a matter of adding in that extra talk group into the system. So again, how do I go ahead and find this out? Is We basically find out where the town is. Obviously, if you live there, you know what county you're in. You know the state. We go in there, look at the conventional system. Can't find it there. Let's start looking at the trunk systems, right? Uh, since the flight watch is a statewide system, it only makes sense that they were on the Hoosier uh, safety system. We found them right in there just by doing a simple uh, page search in our browser and uh, only one talk group. So it was a pretty easy find. Aaron, let me know if that works out well for you. And again, I want to thank you so much for asking your question here on Ask Scanner School. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this month's Ask Scanner School. Now, again, I need your questions to continue doing this. So if you have any questions for me, scannerschool.com slash ask. Now, there were no 
voicemail questions for this month. So unfortunately, there's no tutoring session to give away this month. But again, if you want to win a free one hour long tutoring call with me, all you got to do is ask me your question via SpeakPipe or our local number. Again, all information is online at scannerschool.com slash ask. Again, I'll answer any question you have for me regarding to the scanner radio hobby as best as I can. I've been stumped once. Can you make it twice? I challenge you. No, please don't do that. <laughs> so with that, I'm going to say Simeon 31. We'll catch you all again on Zello. Join us again, scannerschool.com slash Zello. Again, the show notes are online, scannerschool.com slash session 115. And Scanner School's copyright 2020 monitor Long Island, Inc. My name is Phil Lichtenberger, W2LIE. And again, this podcast is always here to help you learn more about the scanner radio hobby. Thank you for listening to Scanner School 73.